All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm Patrick Brown. I'm the Workforce Development Specialist uh, with Arizona Department of Ed. Um, I'm joined here uh, with uh, Elizabeth Cole from Rio Salado College and Charlotte Barnett with ACYR. We've got a couple of more of our Title II program folks who are uh, either there uh, in person or on the phone virtually. So you'll get to meet them as we get through the presentation. So uh, what we're gonna talk about is uh, Maricopa County Title II programs. We're gonna talk about how we're a central part of the workforce development system and an overview of kind of what we do, how we operate, requirements, eligibilities, as well as the nine programs that are that service uh, Maricopa County and City of Phoenix workforce areas. I do want to say if you guys have any questions, this, I would like to say it's a pretty thorough presentation. So uh, if you have any questions, either just you know, kind of jot them down. We're going to do questions at the end or, you know, like I said, just drop them in the chat and we'll, we'll address it once we get to the uh, conclusion of the presentation. All right, so let's uh, just kind of do an at a glance of adult education literacy uh, title two. Um, we're a, a core partner in the uh, workforce development system, WIOA. And so where, where title two uh, has a major role is of course, implementing the state plan, uh, developing career pathways for, um, individuals so they can uh, get into high demand uh, employment and training opportunities. Uh, statewide, we have 20 programs that offer uh, Title II services throughout the, the workforce areas throughout the state. Uh, within City of Phoenix, Maricopa County, we have nine providers. And of those nine, actually three of them serve uh, Maricopa County, City of Phoenix, and Pinnell County, based just kind of where they are located regionally. And based on last year's data, uh, we served about approximately 6,000 individuals uh, in Maricopa County and City of Phoenix. So to give you a little bit of background of like, you know, what kind of authorizes Title II, uh, Title II is administrated by the Arizona Department of Education, Adult Education Services. So what uh, our role at Department of Ed uh, comes from pretty much we determine what the state funding is going to be for Title II, as well as overseeing the NRS system, the national reporting system that captures all the data to make sure that uh, we're meeting all of our, our goals and expectations for Title II. At the state level, we you like said that we can see the uh, Arizona revised statutes that authorizes uh, Title II adult education at the state level. And pretty much what it breaks down in the purposes of adult education is the kind of the three major purposes of of uh, assisting adults and making sure they're literate as so they can obtain uh, skills and employment and become economic self-sufficiency. We also want parents to be able to be full partners in the education of their children, which you know, will uh, improve their economic uh, opportunities of family. And we want adults to obtain a secondary diploma. This kind of leans into the mission of adult education. Of course, our mission statement uh, is to prepare learners for success in college, career, and life. That breaks down to three uh, important goals. This is the system goal. Of course, uh, you know we're a component of the Arizona Educational Pipeline, which will lead an individual to a post-secondary education or a career pathway. The professional goal, which we want to make sure that adult learners can transition into post-secondary to earn a living wage uh, and have those employment opportunities. And then we have an instructional goal, which we want to make sure that adult learners are gonna be successful as they move forward into either post-secondary education or going into the workforce. Now, as we go through this presentation, uh, with most things, there's always kind of acronyms and you know key terms and things like that, so that we're all speaking the same language as we go through this. Uh, I just want to highlight a couple of important uh, terms that you'll see as we go through this, or we'll reference as we continue through. Uh, the first one is uh, HSC diploma. That just simply stands for High School Equivalency Diploma. That's that secondary diploma that an individual earns going through the various pathways to earn a secondary diploma, which I'll, I'll highlight in a moment. Now, a term that kind of gets thrown around pretty interchangeably is GED. GED actually stands for General Educational Development Test. That's the exam that folks take to earn the HSC. So, if, you know, to be correct in our terminology, when someone says, oh, I got my GED, they did not get an exam. They actually took a test, which is the GED, to earn the HSC diploma. AES, that's, that's, that's us. That's me anyway. Uh, 
adult oh. education services, um, ABE, adult basic education. That's for anyone who is uh, deficient in basic skills or they lack a secondary diploma or its equivalent. And then finally is ELA, ELAA, or we reference it as ELA. Uh, that stands for English Language Acquisition for Adult Learners. Those are for individuals who are not yet proficient in English. So earlier I mentioned that there are three ways to earn a high school equivalency diploma in Arizona. The first one is, is the GED pathway. And so that's what a lot of people have traditionally done where they take the exams, the math, language, arts, social studies, and science, and, um, and civics exam in order to uh, demonstrate that they, are, they have the knowledge to, to earn a, a secondary diploma. So that's one pathway. The second pathway is, is referred to as the HSC plus career readiness pathway. So for an individual to earn their HSC through this pathway, uh, they, they have to uh, accumulate ultimately 22 points with mirrors, which you would require to do uh, to earn a high school diploma through a traditional you know, high school pathway. They earn points in academic readiness and career readiness, and they can do this through a couple of different sources. Additionally, they have to take the civics test. So ultimately what they're doing is we're looking at their, what they've done either high school credits that they've already accumulated, they can put towards this. They can take community college classes to work towards this or their employment uh, readiness courses they can take to go towards the, the, this pathway. Then the third one is the college credit pathway. And this is where an individual must earn 25 college credits in six uh, subject areas. Classes have to be at least 100 level uh, or higher and they have to uh, pass with a C or above. And so with this, in addition to this Arizona civics test, they would be able to earn a secondary diploma going through this pathway. So these are the three pathways that we have. There's a lot more information to it, but like, so for the sake of time, it's gonna kind of give you the, the flyby of the, the information with that. All right, so, look, so like I said, I gave you all the background, all that information. Let's just get into just the brass tacks of what adult education does uh, in our state. We provide adult basic education, which you know, I referred to earlier. We provide high school equivalency prep. This is, of course, the, the prep for to either for taking that uh, GED examination or going through the, the, the two other pathways to earn a secondary diploma. We also provide workforce preparation. So this would be the employability skills. This would be uh, preparing an individual to be successful in the world of work. We do civic in, uh, integration. This is uh, really for everyone, but especially for our uh, English language learners. These, are, this is you know them understanding you know basic civics, how you know their government works, all of that. Digital literacy. I think you know in the last two years we've seen how important digital literacy is. That's something that we were doing even prior to the pandemic of making sure that our students are comfortable using technology in various capacities. And then the last one is uh, integrated education and training, the IET. This is of course workforce training as that and uh, education all rolled into one. We'll talk about that a little greater detail as we get deeper in this uh, presentation. So ultimately, like I said, this is, uh, you know, when we talk about the purposes of adult education, it ties into, you know, overall workforce development. Everything that we're doing uh, is going to work into preparing an individual not only to, you know, be educated, but so they can utilize education either to, to further their education with the end goal of them being able to, you know, go into a livable wage employment, improve their situation, their family situation, and all the, the work that adult ed does plays into that. So I'm gonna hand it over to Elizabeth Cole. She'll talk about our shared performance indicators and measures. Thank you, Patrick. Um, so you guys can see the title two shared permit performance indicators and measures. These should not be unfamiliar to you because again, these are shared performance metrics across core partners. Um, Title II being a core partner, we're held to the same thing. So we're reporting employment rates, second quarter after exit, employment rate, fourth quarter after exit, median earnings, credential attainment, 
um, effectiveness in, in serving employers. And then on the next page, I'm also going to explain a little bit more about measurable skills gain, which is one of the ways through partnership um, that we believe Title II can really be leveraged to help achieve measurable skills gains. You wanna go on to the next slide, Patrick? So for us, measurable skills gains, um, we can document achievement of at least one educational functioning level. That for us is done um, a number of different ways through testing. Um, and this is something we've done for years, uh, but this is a way that we can get a measurable skills gain. Um, for a student who attains a secondary school diploma or its equivalent, so if they receive that high school equivalency diploma that Patrick was talking about earlier, that is actually a measurable skills gain now as soon as they achieve that. Um, and then the last three are some new ways through um, our integrated education and training programs that students can also now earn measurable skills gains. We are in the process of Title II programs of up uploading documentation of these now into our reporting system, uh, which is going to show an additional way this year that some of our students have attained measurable skills gains. One of those ways is through a secondary or post-secondary transcript um, to show a significant number of credit hours. They can also have satisfactory um, or better progress towards, towards establishment of milestones. Um, that can be things as completing on the job training. It can also be apprenticeship programs. Um, but we're also looking at similar models if students are completing credit classes while they're in training programs as progress towards established milestones. And then there's also the successful passages of exams, um, which are industry recognized. So many of our programs are partnering in different ways. Um, and there are exams that students are taking to show that in the integrated education and training programs, which we'll hear about in a little bit. But these are all now ways that Title II programs can document measurable skills gains um, in our programs. Next slide, please. So Title II, um, here's some of our shared goals that we have as organizations, um, not only here in Maricopa County in the city of Phoenix, um, as well as serving Pinal County as well, um, but these are some shared goals that we as Title II have across the state. And Patrick talked about how there's 20 uh, partners in the state. We come together often. We just had our Mountain Plains conference that was hosted up here at Rio. We got to see many of our colleagues from across the state. These are something that we're all talking about. So we're talking about the shared system cost, um, which are a part of our contracts, um, and that's to be able to support the workforce system, and that's to help us be compliant. Um, and we were called out in a DOL audit for that um, by not having those MOU IFA addendums set up. Regionalization um, to support integrated service delivery and a no wrong door approach. You all know that this is something that the law talks about extensively. And this is something that's very important to us in adult ed. We up here are a number of different organizations spread across Maricopa County and the city of Phoenix. We have to navigate not only the system with Maricopa County, but also with the city of Phoenix. So we really need regionalization to be able to support that no wrong door approach um, and partnership in being able to serve our students effectively. Referral systems, um, we've said this time and time again, we know that there are two referral systems. Um, and frankly, our partner in, down in Queen Creek that works with Pinal County, there's an additional referral system that they work with down there. We'd love to see support for regionalized referral systems. It is very time intensive on our part to have to A, attend multiple meetings, but as well as have to educate our staff on multiple referral systems, especially when the law talks about the no wrong door approach um, and being able to get students into the system. Again, we'd like to see um, for that shared system costs, we would like to see those addendums to the MOU IFA develop it with consistency across the local workforce areas. We have an established MOU IFA between one of our partners, Literacy Volunteers, with the city of Phoenix. Uh, Queen Creek Adult Education also has an established um, addendum to the MOU IFA with Pinal County. 
We'd also like to see a standardized co-enrollment process to support integrated and education pro programs on the ETPL. Again, this has been very time intensive of Title II um, to work out co-enrollment processes with Maricopa County um, and then have to turn around and do that again uh, with other local workforce areas. Um, so we would like to see more integration um, of that standardized approach. Next slide, Patrick. In terms of eligibility for our programs, um, you can see on the screen what we look for. They have to be 16 years of age or older, not currently enrolled in K-12, and this is per state statute. Um, so generally, if they're between the ages of 16 or high school age students, we ask for um, documentation that they are not enrolled um, in a K-12 system so that we can be able to see, serve them. And they must meet Arizona state eligibility requirements of basic skills deficient, not having a secondary diploma or the recognized equivalent or is an English language learner. So pretty uh, standard eligibility requirements and that's the same across all of our programs. Patrick, do you want me to take the next slide or do you want to kick back in and talk about IETs? I'll, I'll go ahead and do the IETs. All right, so let's uh, transition into the IET. So uh, like I said, so we're, we're speaking the same language. Uh, what the IET is, it basically it takes the, uh, the different components of adult education and workforce development and it and it all the student received that instruction contextually and concurrently. Basically, you know, those are I would say big scrabble words for they're getting all this training in context at the same time. And so the whole purpose of the IET is allows an individual to earn their secondary diploma and a industry recognized credential in one in, in one educational experience. So this graphic really, I think, you know, uh, encapsulate what, what the IET experience looks like for, you know, an adult student. So of course, a student is in an IET program, they're getting either adult basic education, so they're working towards uh, earning their high school equivalency, or they may, this could be an and or, uh, they could be an individual who maybe they have a, a degree from their home country, but they lack the English language skills in order to gain employment um, in the United States. So they've entered into an IET program where they are focusing on their English language skills. They're also getting occupational skills training, which they're getting that training that will go towards the uh, industry recognized credential. They're also getting the workplace preparation. So they're getting those employability skills. And this is all happening and the, the, the content of curriculum is designed to all lend each other. So as an individual say learning math, they're learning math as is uh, gonna be uh, in context of being say a pipe fitter. If they're learning uh, you know, English, they're definitely learning say business English, you know, so that if they're gonna go into say an office job, their, their English language skills would, would match and be appropriate for that environment. When a student completes, of course, they are now prepared to either go into the work field, you know, towards, you know, a career or go through a career pathway, they could look at going to post-secondary through college, or if they want to go into like further training, maybe a full apprentice program or additional training, you know, past the IET, they're prepared to do that. So as we focus on the different uh, IETs, uh, one thing that's important is that it has to be industry recognized credentials. How is that determined? Well, that's where we look at the local labor market and we look at the occupational mm -hmm. clusters that um, are considered high needs areas in a particular workforce area. So which this graphic here is, is more or less statewide, but City of Phoenix and Maricopa County, their high needs areas pretty much align with what's, um, you know, our uh, high needs areas pretty much across the state. Uh, our, all of our programs uh, in adult education within Maricopa County and City of Phoenix are offering these uh, IETs in these areas. They're either currently offer them or they're the options available for an individual to uh, earn their secondary uh, diploma or refine their English language skills, as well as get a industry recognized credential in uh, one of these uh, areas. So at this point, uh, we want to start talking about the specifics of the nine programs that uh, serve uh, city, 
Phoenix and Maricopa County. Uh, I'm going to hand things over to Charlotte Barnett. And I know there's several of you guys who are on the call who are representatives uh, of your program. So as we get to your program, it's all in alphabetical order. So you'll know when it's coming. Uh, feel free to uh, speak about the specifics of your particular program. So I'll go ahead and hand things over to you, Charlotte. Okay, great. Thanks, Patrick. Yes, I'm Charlotte Barnett. I am CEO with Arizona Center for Youth Resources. Also in the room here with me is David Howden, our adult education manager, um, who helps directly provide the services with all of the teachers. Um, I am going to go through the different specifics with the programs. If you're on the call, I can't actually see you technically because I don't, uh, so I didn't uh, cause any issues <laughs> with with the connectivity or anything, I don't have that open. So uh, just chime in when it's your turn and I'll pause for a second. Otherwise I will cover your slide. Um, I think before I jump into all of the different um, uh, specifics with uh, the, the slides and whatnot, and I think Patrick's in charge. So oh, exactly. Okay, I'll just, I'll have Vanna uh, <laughs> put slides for me, Patrick. Um, uh, you're gonna, the, the common thread you're gonna see as we go through these is the, the core services are the core services. We're all providing the core services. It may be slightly different and unique. They may be in a different location, um, but for the most part, we are all providing the similar services. And so you, you can guarantee that if you refer someone to one of these different programs, the most important piece is probably looking at the location and looking at the IET training classes that we provide access to. Um, because that's where I think when Patrick was talking about some of the nuances, that's really where the differences um, technically come in. Um, ACYR is, is slightly unique in the fact that we do focus on ages 16 to 24 as an organization. That is our, our primary um, objective, but we do serve all ages 16 and plus in all of our different locations. Um, but my team is actually uh, uh, trained in how to do trauma-informed care and positive youth development practices. Um, we've done a lot of co-enrollment with youth programming for WIOA over the years, um, in addition to having had provided WIA programming at one point. Um, throughout our history. So we do have a great understanding of the different services under workforce, um, as do all of the other uh, Title II providers. Um, we focus specifically on uh, HSE programming, um, ELLA services, which is also ESL to a lot of people, so that that's really clear, and uh, basic skills remediation. And I want to point out something that is missed a lot of times that I think is a great connection um, for the adult programs and other one-stop services is that basic skills remediation really is those services that help people get their academic levels up. So if they're not passing their assessment exams, getting into college, um, we can actually help them prepare for that. Um, and it doesn't cost anything for most of the programs. And so um, instead of having to pay for the zero level classes, which are not on, which are not Pell funded at this point, right? We can actually provide that service and help them get prepared, right? So um, if you're not clear in any training program, if they're going to be, because I know a lot of them are like ninth and 10th grade levels, we can help them do that, which is something that they won't get just by going to the college directly. They'll have to pay out of pocket, which could prevent them from moving forward. So I think that's a great benefit that even, um, I, I've had this actual conversation for over 20 years and I've said, it's not well known that that's a service that the adult only programs actually sure. provide. Um, and I do know a lot of adults are like, ooh, I already have, but it, it could be a really great benefit to them. Um, so at ACYR, we do have high flex learning. We have smaller class sizes. Um, we do try to keep it around 10 to 15. So it's a small learning environment. Uh, we do have one-to-one -one with technology. And one other piece that's really beneficial we see is that we do have wraparound supports from our social work and engagement teams. So this is really great connections to the community, um, not that the other programs with their navigators don't also do this as well, but we do have a social worker on staff that actually provides some assistance and interns from ASU um, throughout the year that helps with that as well. So um, 
Um, and then our focus currently uh, is IT fundamentals, which actually helps uh, provide introductory training for Network Plus, A++, security plus classes um, that help lead to certification and nursing assistant. Currently, we've been partnering with Accord um, and primarily Arizona at Work City of Phoenix. That's where we've seen a lot of our referrals. Um, but obviously, that same service is available in, in the Maricopa system as well. Um, Cheryl is going to leave this. Okay, Patrick, I think we can, we can move on. Um, is Friendly House, someone from Friendly House on the line? I don't remember if anybody was today. No, I'm not seeing anybody from Friendly House. Okay. Um, so Friendly House Adult Education, um, you can see they've been in, in business since 1920, offering classes in English literacy. Um, they have a plethora of services available on their, on, at their location and throughout the valley. Um, you can see they have emergency support services, immigration legal services, college and career readiness, academic advisement, Chromebook rentals and tutoring. Um, again, the core services with adult education, adult basic and secondary language, um, that ELLA ESL programming, and English language training for refugees. Um, their IET programs uh, are focusing on Microsoft Office Specialists, Certified Nursing Assistant, and also IET Fundamentals. I have a question real quick. Are they offered in English? Are they all English, your IETs? Um, Patrick, do you know for sure? I'm, trying to I'm sorry, I didn't hear the question. Um, are all the IETs for Friendly House offered any, they're just English language, right? They're not. Yeah, well, well, well the thing is, they, they can be offered in English or, or well, I would say they're typically offered in English, even uh, students who are English language learners are doing uh, an IET program, they have to at least hit a minimum uh, language level, and that's determined at the program level, so I won't get into the weeds of that, to then go into the particular IET. Okay, I was just curious. Thank you. Can I ask a question? You might not know the answer, but what's the difference between English language, English language acquisition and English language training for refugees? Are they the same classes? That's a good question. That is a good question. Patrick, oh. do you know the difference between- I, I only heard the first part of the question, so could, could you repeat, please? Yeah, so what's the difference between English language acquisition for adults and English language training for refugees? Uh, academically, there is no difference. Uh, for this particular program, often uh, refugees don't necessarily fully qualify in Arizona for adult education services when we start getting into the legalese of it all. So this is an additional service they offer that's not necessarily tied to their adult education grant. Okay, thank you. Okay, I think you can go on. I like the Chromebook right <laughs> um, Gilbert Adult Learning Program, is there someone online? No, no one's online from Gilbert. Uh, Delia, Delia had a conflict, she wasn't able to make it. Okay, okay. So the Gilbert Adult Learning Program offers two academic programs, adult basic and secondary education, and the um, ELLA <coughs> services. Um, looks like they're offering Microsoft Office Specialist certification, IET programming, and they can have credentials in Microsoft Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, and Microsoft Excel. And they do have their schedule listed um, on the right. Thank you. Hey, Patrick. International Rescue Committee. They're, they're right across the way. <laughs> Is someone on the line? Uh, I don't believe Melissa was, uh, Melissa had a conflict as well. Okay. Um, thank you, Patrick. Um, so International Rescue Committee, a nonprofit organization working with refugee and other marginalized immigrant population um, to promote self-sufficiency and community integration. Um, they have English language and citizenship classes available. Um, they do specialize in refugees and newly arrived immigrants, um, but it's open to all adult ELO populations. Um, and then they have additional services with financial capabilities, immigration, um, uh, and services are offered online or in person, and they're working on their hybrid learning. Um, so it looks like their uh, registration is Fridays 10 to 1230 or by appointment. Hey, Patrick. <laughs> Literacy Volunteers of Maricopa County. Is Jesus on? No, Jesus isn't here. He had a conflict as well. 
Um, so Literacy Volunteers of Maricopa County, a community-based 501c3 nonprofit organization. Um, they're dedicated to improving adult reading, writing, and mathematical skills and prepping for the GED to attain a high school equivalency diploma. Um, offers English language classes, including civics and citizenship lessons. Uh, they strive to empower adults in our community to become better candidates for sustainable employment, participate in higher education or job training and improve their quality of life. Uh, they do provide adult basic and secondary education and English acquisition for adults for more than 20 years. And you can see they have in-person and online classes available at multiple locations. Patrick? Maricopa County Adult Probation, Adult Education Program. I'm here, thank you, Charlotte. Um, I'm Jackandy, I'm with Maricopa County Adult Probation, um, Adult Education Program. We have three offices, one in Phoenix, one in Mason, and the, the last one in Glendale. Um, we are housed and funded um, employees of the Adult Probation Department, but we are open to all of the community with the same requirements that you talked about earlier. Um, we have adult basic education, adult secondary, GED prep, digital literacy, English language acquisition classes, and also workforce career services. Um, we also help with, we have IET programs um, with the NRF suite, retail, customer service, warehousing and logistics. Um, we also provide support with ACRC. Um, we have a proctor, proctored assessments within there. Um, I'm available to help people with career planning, resume writing, interview assistance. I also refer people that need additional services to our other title uh, partners within WIOA. And um, we refer to both City of Phoenix and Maricopa County. Um, I'm not supposed to have a preference, but having worked at uh, Maricopa County, um, I know their system a little bit better. So I tend to uh, refer people that are closer to um, one of those offices if possible, because I know their system, but I am learning um, City of Phoenix's systems as well. And depending on where the person is located, if it's more convenient for them, um, I would also refer that way. Uh, we have in-person and online classes. We do have a computer lab at each center um, with the ability to do all of, the, all of their needs. We help with transitioning to college and career as well. We have a lending library um, of laptops that, and hotspots that are available for students to help with that digital divide. Um, and we also have scholarships and practice tests that are available and some um, transportation assistance available to students. Um, so thanks for ha having us here today. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Mesa Adult Education Program. I know Deborah was on, but I think she had to jet out for a different meeting, so. Okay. So Mesa Public Schools Adult Education Program offers academic classes in adult basic education, adult secondary education, and uh, the English language acquisition for adults. Um, classes include workplace skills and civics education. Um, their instructional delivery are high, is high flex, and students can attend online, in person, or a combination of both. Um, you can see they serve multiple areas in Maricopa County and Phoenix. Um, and integrated education and training programs are National Retail Federation and incumbent custodial worker program. They can register online, in person, or by phone. And one bonus about the Mesa location is walking distance from the Mesa Youth Hub, Maricopa County. Mesa Youth Hub at the libraries, 0.8 miles. <laughs> so. Patrick? Queen Creed, Queen Creed okay. Adult Education? I'm going to say no. <laughs> I'm going to say no. They don't usually join. Every, okay. Every house is too. Um, all right. So Queen Creed um, has classes, um, adult basic education, ELLA, and IET services. Um, it looks like they have a schedule Monday through Thursday and Tuesday through Thursday um, in the evenings. Uh, it's managed enrollment that's free of charge and in person and online registration. Um, it looks like they have two separate locations and um, they serve multiple areas throughout Maricopa and Pinal. Um, their modality is in person, high flex, and virtual. Um, and their IET credentials include retail industry fundamental specialist, customer service and sales certified specialist business of retail of certified specialist and warehouse inventory and logistics specialist. Queen Creek, one thing to add, 
their IETs are on these scale. So it's, it's, it's just, it's, I mean, all IETs eventually, hopefully we can get them there, but just to let you guys know, you can access Queen Creek. So, yeah. Well, and just to clarify uh, of the programs we've mentioned, th those programs, those uh, areas are on the ETPL as well. Oh, okay. I didn't want to make that assumption. So <laughs> I, just, I just know that I saw Green Creeks um, and I am familiar with another uh, partners, ones that are on the ETPL as well. So. Okay, Patrick. Rio Salado, I think we know he's on, so let her take over. Thanks, Charlotte. So Rio Salado College also offers um, GD test prep, English language classes, as well as career training. Uh, this year, we've had a credible expansion. We have six RSC locations that are spread out through Maricopa County. Three partner locations now were on South Mountain Community College campus in partnership with their Construction Trades Institute. We're also at two of the Westmec locations. We're on their Southwest campus in Buckeye and their Northeast campus up by the Deer Valley Airport. Mm -hmm. We offer in-person and live online classes. Oh, I guess I should mention too, we also have our Virtual Learning Academy, um, which is continuing all the best practices we learned during the pandemic for our students. We actively support all three pathways to the high school equivalency diploma that Patrick went over earlier. So we have had graduates in the high school equivalency um, plus career readiness program, which is one of the newest uh, pathways. Obviously, we have students that participate in the GED testing pathway, and we're scholarshiping students that want to do the credit pathway now um, through our adult ACE uh, director, Kate Packer. We have wraparound support services for our students. Um, obviously, as a community college, we have access to a lot of support services, including disability resources services. So we actively work with vocational rehabilitation for our students that have documented disabilities. All of our registration fees um, have been waived until further notice. Uh, we developed a student Google site, Rio Central, um, and if you click directly from that link, it'll take you to our Google site. You can also just put in Rio Central, and it is the number one search on Google when you do it. Uh, this is the site we developed for our students, but it's also a way to get more information about our program, as well as to directly register um, and start with the uh, registration process from that website. We do have a no wrong door approach. So if a student comes to any of our locations, we have the ability to register them for any of the locations they'd like to be at. Uh, currently, we have seven, seven IET pathways aligned to the Maricopa Community College's academic um, fields of interest. And we also have developed on-ramps based on academic levels. We provide scholarships to, to bridge students to college classes through Adult ACE and through our College to Career Bridge program. Uh, we also recognize National Adult Education Honor Society students, and we have a graduation. We have a graduation coming up soon. The next page, um, since we have so many locations, gives you a quick map and a listing of all those locations where we offer classes. So nine physical locations and then our virtual learning academy. And then slide 27, if you head on to that one, Patrick. Um, this gives you a little bit of an overview of the uh, what a high school equivalency student experiences in our program, as well as an English language student. From registration, the classroom experience, um, college and career pathways to support services to how we support them beyond our program. And then you can also see those uh, credit, non-credit IET programs that we offer in the different fields of interest. So applied technology, business entrepreneurialism and management, computer and information technology and health sciences. And then lastly, um, on the next slide, you can see our IET pathways um, of how we've developed on ramps. So the business entrepreneurship program, we have a non-credit introduction to business class that we provide to students that leads them into uh, credit classes. We recommend a lot of our students go through the retail fundamentals credential, which many of our programs, as you can see, are offering through the National Retail Foundation. Um, applied technology, we have an established uh, program um, right now with uh, South Mountain Community College around carpentry, electrical flaming and framing. We're working with West Mech on welding and our, our Rio College on nanotechnology. 
We have multiple computer and information technology pathways from Microsoft Office, cybersecurity, iOS web app development, um, and desktop support. And then with Phoenix College, we have a developed health sciences program um, with their medical administrative assisting class, which can actually lead, lead to the medical assisting program, um, which is also a stackable credential leading to an associate's degree and to a bachelor's degree at Northern Arizona University. Thank you. All right, so 